Chemo wants to fill Alexis in on yesterday's topic. Chemo is your friend. <laughs> yeah, with friends like that. <laughs> Believe me, I know. I was sitting there with the hose in my veins. Tell you, labor pains have nothing on this. Anybody have any revelations over the last 24 hours they'd like to share? Words of wisdom? It's just the most amazing thing how the prospect of dying turns us all into philosophers. <laughs> I always liked being pretentious. Now I have an excuse. <laughs> Something occurred to me in the wee hours, if you're interested. Of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all my adult life has been spent worrying about how I look. When I modeled, my body was my obsession. And then I got married and gave up the career part, but I was expected to maintain my appearance. I am the second Mrs. Grant, a trophy wife. And my sweetie was happy to pay whatever it took to keep me looking like his living doll. It's a nice thing about having money. It fixes so many things. Nip here, a tuck there, a little liposuction where it counts. The one thing I never mentioned to you, my dear sisters, is I paid a lot of money for that breast they chopped off. Can you get a refund? I don't think it didn't occur to me. <laughs> anyway, I was sitting there on the floor of my bathroom last night, hugging the toilet and dreading going through even more chemo. And I realized at this point I'd settle for mere mutilation. Oh boy, do I remember that feeling. <sighs> there is some comfort in knowing that you've all been in as much pain as I was and are surviving it. Ultimately, I think that got me through the night. That's why we're here, mm -hmm. to help each other through. Yeah. Monica, how are your treatments going? Well, I'm having a little problem with this whole concept of chemo being my friend. May I make an observation? Go ahead. I think you're holding yourself back, as if you really want to be separate from the rest of us. Am I that obvious? Mm. I guess so. Well, look, I'm not trying to give the impression of being above this group or a snob. That's not the case. Then what is? I am a doctor. I mean, I am used to giving orders, to designing treatment to help my patients to heal. I should be sitting where Diane is sitting. That's the chair I feel most comfortable in. And I suppose I am... Uh, I'm embarrassed because I should know better. And how did I become patient? Control. It's what you're used to. Used to? No, that's how I define my life. And now I don't have control. Cancer has control. And I don't trust it. You can't trust it. Cancer's the enemy. Treatment's the ally. It's always difficult to accept that our bodies are out of our control. And excuse me, look, I did have control. And I blew it all by myself. I was in such denial that I did what I would chastise any of my patients for doing. I ignored my symptoms. So, look where I am. You know, I went through denial myself. And when you're used to doing a lot of different things in your life, you expect to be strong, even sometimes tough. And then you're surprised when you're vulnerable. If we can just overcome our need to be in charge... Oh, that's so easy for you to say. You're cured. I do not. Uh, it's okay. No, excuse me, it's not really okay. For those of us that are going through treatment, this woman just won her battle with cancer. I think it's very presumptuous. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Please believe me, I'm very glad you won your fight. And I'm very happy for you. I am happy for you, and I am jealous of you, and I resent you very much. And I also know it is because of my own damn arrogance that believed that nothing like this could ever touch me. And I hate this. I should be very gracious, but I'm... There isn't anything gracious about cancer. There isn't anything gra graceful about cancer or anything elegant about it. Everything is just... And I'm beginning to hit myself. Ow! Oh.
cry. I feel like an idiot. How selfish can a person be? Please, don't do this to yourself, Monica. You have enough work to do without creating new scars. Well, talk about how to control. I wish I had been able to cry like that, that soon. Believe me, once you start, you'll find it hard to stop. That's what we're about here. Mm -hmm. If you're going to keep it all inside, you may as well have stayed home. Well, if I weren't so terrified of losing control, I, I just might surrender myself to all of your collective wisdom. A piece at a time, Monica. You know, if you're comfortable with it, I'd really like to hear your story. I could do that. Well, my cancer by Monica Quartermain. It started last May. I had been in the hospital about 48 hours straight. Good grief. We had a heart transplant. One little girl to another, her cousin. And I knew them both. Anyway, after that, I, I went home and I slept for a very long time. And when I woke up, I felt this, this twinge on my left breast. And I thought, actually, maybe I had just slept funny. Oh, yeah. But being a very conscientious and responsible human being that I am, I immediately made a, an appointment for a mammogram. And then I canceled it. I can't tell you how many I canceled. Well, no, I can. I, there were three of them. And each time I canceled, I had a very valid reason. The more the pain persisted, the more terrified I got. Any excuse would do. I got to be where I... Hangnail was a terrific excuse to just... Mm -hmm. Everybody else's crisis seems more important than our own. I personally had to wait until after my daughter's wedding. I suspected I had cancer. But what a bummer it would have been to ruin everybody else's day with something so inconvenient. Better to wait until it's almost too late. How's that for a rationalization, huh? What gets me is the injustice. I mean, here she is. She used all her strength and spirit to save us. Life of a child, and what's, 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 her, what's her reward? She has a lump in her breast it's hours later. Where's the, where's the fairness? But Monica's is no more unjust than yours, Paige. <sighs> Are any of you? You all have something valuable to give and something precious to lose. Which is why we're determined to not let the cancer steal that away from us. If it helps, Monica, I'm a control freak myself. What I had to figure out was where to focus that control. To put the same effort into being master of my immune system's response to my cancer yes. as I did into being a size five all my life. I know you're wondering what I'm doing here. Wait, I'm wondering, I'm so sorry, I didn't... No, 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 please. I really need to say this. I know I'm lucky. I didn't lose a breast. I got by with a lumpectomy and radiation. And sometimes when I sit here, I listen to you talking, and I feel just a, a little guilty about that. Um, but, yeah, I beat my cancer. It's been three years. To tell you the truth, not one day goes by that I actually believe that I've beat it, that it's over and done with. It's like this ax over my head and I just feel it's gonna fall down any minute and, and I know it's gonna be there until the day I die. But I hope that's not gonna be until you're very, very old. You know, all of you are under some kind of impression that I'm like this role model for survival. Well, the 
truth is that I need you more than you need me. And you have to know how important you are to me. Because... Because you are my survival. right out of therapy, making a total fool out of myself, and then I decided I needed a friend. That'd be me. Yes, that would be you indeed. Well, because if anybody could understand seeing Red over Lucy Co., that would be you. That should be Tony, too. But Tony seems to have a blind spot where she is concerned. Please tell me you're in a blind spot, too. Where Lucy is concerned, I'm a pure pragmatist. So, tell me, what did she do to get under your skin? She is my therapist's new best friend. And even worse than that, when I tried even suggesting to Tony that some of what's happened around our house might be little Miss Lucy's fault, he insisted it was all my fault and Lucy is as pure as the driven snow. I'm sure those weren't his exact words. No, no, but it just makes me so mad. Seems that Tony can forgive everyone but me. Can't he see how wrong he is? Oh, my dear friend. I think that's the crux of the problem. What? Well, if you're insisting that Tony is wrong, it must mean that somebody else is right. I would assume that someone is you. You're never going to resolve anything that way. Is it worth it? Is being right worth losing a marriage over? Tony is simply not willing to make it work. It won't work as long as either or both of you insist on being right because that automatically assumes that the other person is wrong. And nobody likes being wrong. Well, that's what Kevin's been telling us. Well, in this particular case, Kevin is right. But he's the only one. I think I'm ready to hang out a shingle of my own. Excuse me. Hello. Hi, sweetheart. You miss me? You bet I do. I was beginning to worry about you. Well, actually, I called uh, a few nights ago in kind of a black funk. And no one was home, so I asked Ned not to tell you that I called. Is something wrong? Well, other than I desperately wanted to come home. But uh, today is quite another day. What happened? Well, I kind of lost it in therapy and uh, impressed absolutely no one. It seems they're all going through the same nightmare as I am. Well, that's got to be some comfort to you. I miss you like mad. Me too, Q. Um, at least I know I am doing the right thing. Being here is good. So, are you okay? Hmm, hanging in. Well, how about the rest of the game? Everybody's fine. Boys are going to be sorry that they missed your call. Well, I will catch them next time. You give them, give them hugs for me. And I mean that, Alan, both of them. I will. Bobby's here. She had a terrible day. We were consoling each other. Oh, put her on. He's lying to you. There's no consoling going on here. He's just shaping me up, which I very much deserve. Tough times, huh? Oh, please. L listen, you have enough on your mind. How's the chemo going? Unspeakable. No, no, wait. Um, I'm, I'm supposed to, to be working on this. It is doing unspeakable things to the cancer, and chemo is my friend. Well, very good. That's progress. When I'm not throwing up. <laughs> I do love you. I love you, too. You take care of him, okay? I will. Here he is. Sweetheart? Listen, you. You keep an eye on, on Bobby, all right? I'll do my best. I'm, uh, 
I'm kind of exhausted at the moment. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, great. I'll make sure that the boys stick around. I like that. Good night, sweetheart. Good night, Todd. She, um, she asked me to take care of you. She asked me to do the same for you. Oh, God, I miss her. I know you do. 